Today we're going to start some road work, uh, ditching and stuff. And made the decision I'm going to try to pick up some of this. Uh, this whole development is like all these trees that uprooted. This went there from the snow. That's a ditch line. If this fails, it goes. It, it kind of did fail the last rainstorm we had down there, filled up and went across the road. So all this is going to get picked up. Um, I don't believe there's a lot of money this year to do a bunch of road work with, but uh, problem is that last storm. I mean, that's the culvert that goes across this road. I got to clean all this out. Uh, the guy that owns these lots, he lives out on the corner, but he owns this land here. Uh, if you look, the birches are all kind of leaning in. Some of them went back up, but they're real weak. So he gave me the okay to get rid of them. I want to get rid of these because this is I live in this development three times this winter I went to leave here and had to cut trees here because they were bent down over the road where I couldn't even fit under them with a my pickup with a plow on it so we're gonna take the time we've already been cleaning out the birches that were real bad but we've decided now anything that's gonna you know block the road or take power out we're gonna remove but I know the money just ain't there so it's a reality I just I feel I got to do the right thing and like I said I live out here so that does help <laughs> but this is what we're going to be doing I'll show you some other spots and as we get up there I'm, I'm actually starting at the other end uh, and coming in I'm going to take a quick shot of this um, this was basically just full of a couple broken limbs and leaves you'll see the pile way down there um, but you kind of give it a shape I got to come up with a shovel there's a culvert here shape that a little bit uh, the original people that own these properties always said, oh, I'll keep care of the culvert near my house. It never happens. <laughs> so, but their attitude now is like this one here, you can see. That's the kind of stuff that happened. It, we had a massive rainstorm, so everything that was in the road, all the sand from the winter sand, all ended up in these ditches. So, I've got to clean it out and get these culverts. They're talking rain again this weekend, but there's a couple around the corner I gotta go do because they're pretty much 90% plugged. But I wanna show, this is some of the stuff we do. Uh, I think just grading these camp roads, you gotta, like there's a culvert in there I dug out this morning. This was pretty deep before, but it had a lot of stuff wash in it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of leaves. One year I had the budget where we leaf blew all the leaves out so you didn't run into this every spring but uh, we had a lot of trees rotted trees come down fall out into the road you can see the mess that's left so I really can't like grade a road and leave this crap in the ditches so uh, I'm talking to one of the road committee members like this is someone's private property it is and it ain't. The pins to this road are actually probably nine feet behind where this posted thing is. Um, but again, we have a, we've had a couple bad winters since I've lived out here where you push banks back or whatever. I don't want this, I don't want stuff like this hanging out uh, and hitting my truck or whatever. But like half these trees are already on their way down. So I gotta come up here with a chainsaw, clean this up. And like I said, they're like, well, we don't, we ain't gonna worry about that right now. You can't, you got, you got to deal with this, or we're probably gonna have failures this summer uh, if we have bad rainstorms. But we've already had one. But this is what we're gonna be working on probably for the next five or six days. Videotape everything, and you'll see a little bit of what we do. Like I said I'm a landscape business. One week you're doing flowers and trees, and next week you're doing. I love doing this, this is kind of what I want to do, so as I get older and then uh, hoping one of my grandsons or granddaughters or someone shows an interest, all I got is grandsons so far, but my daughter stuck with my company, so uh, whatever, I'm hoping one of them shows interest and can run with this, so by then I'll be old and ready to slow down. <laughs> Alright, so we'll uh, clean this up a little bit. What we're going to do is I'm going to take the excavator and shape this, but 
rather than uh, keep moving the dirt pile down the road, I'm just going to take a scoop now and then, get it out of my way so that I can keep working my way down. This is probably the worst uh, section of this development right now, as far as uh, the ditches being full of broken trees. What's sad is this is like 30% leaves and then the rest of it's like a lot of it's just the sand and uh, processed gravel that got pushed off the road when you're plowing. And th this year uh, was one of the worst I've seen as far as uh, things never froze up yet. So a lot of this material, a lot of good material got pushed off the road but you can't retrieve it. Like, I, that's one thing I won't do when I'm grading roads. I won't pull this crap out of the ditch and put it back in the road because all those leaves, you'll get a pocket of leaves and then the next time you have a downpour, you end up with a big cavity in the road and people just get, not a lot of the other people we used to hire would come in here with a grader and just yank this stuff all back in the road. They'd have someone that was rock, what they call rock picking the roads a little bit. It was a big limb, they'd put it up back out in the wood line, but for the most part, you end up a lot of organics. I know I've lived out here since 1997. I know when I what I do to these roads outlast anybody else's work that's done up been done out here. And I I would like to do things a little different. The reality is the money's not here, so I do the best. I'm going to say that because I'm videotaping this. I do the best I can for the money I'm getting paid. Uh, like I said, I live out here, so I don't mind doing a little extra. And, uh, but even uh, uh, other developments, I try to give them the biggest bang for their buck I can. I think that's why I stay pretty busy up here. Today, jumping from the machine and <laughs> from one machine to another, all and stuff. This pile here is actually uh, there's a lot of uh, processed gravel and reground hot top that got pushed off the road over the winter. Um, like I said, I did the best I could plowing, but there was a couple storms where. I might have been better off with a York rake than I was a plow, but... I'm gonna try to haul five or six loads before lunch, after lunch, we'll come up and, uh... I'll be treating get it, a lot of it on camera, but I'm gonna do some tree work. Kind of funny, sometimes you ask people, because some of the trees are kind of like on the borderline of what the road committee owns, their road right away, and some of the land, but people out here lost power and stuff so many times this year they're like hey if it bent over it's going to cause an issue ah uh, take it <laughs> so you wake up the funny part is is uh it seems like when we lost power it was always when it was like the coldest day of the whole week uh it'd be well below zero and that's we'd get winds uh Earlier that day, we'd have that real heavy, wet snow, and then at night it would freeze up, power lines, trees would break, come down. It just all winter was that way. I, I mean, I'd rather have an old-fashioned winter where there was a bunch of snow, no, normal snow. So hopefully that's what's coming uh, this season, this next season. I want to shape this this line a little bit. I know construction guys watching this video will probably give me a bunch of crap, but I just, uh, I can only devote so much time. Uh, I'm only getting paid so much to do basically three and a half miles of road. So, um, again, I'm going to try to give them the best I can for the money. This ditch line used to be pretty clean and uh, I used to be able to just come up with a bucket of one of the tractors and uh, clean it out pretty good. And then we had such a rush of water come through it this spring a couple times that a lot of rocks were picking out again, you know, sticking up. So I went to clean it this morning by just with the 
bucket and you'll see these like uh, football sized rocks are everywhere. But it's still pretty soft too. Things are pretty saturated still. Because of the weird rainstorm we've been getting. People might question how deep the ditches are too, but uh, all these small private roads you'll find when I do them, I do them deep because uh, a lot of time they ain't got the budget uh, to have me come back for four or five years, so I try to leave a little room where the leaves and stuff like that get in them. We got a handful of people that live out here that walk around and if they see crap in them and uh, a limb breaks off or someone hauling brush out loses some they'll uh, they'll take the time and clean it out even if they just throw it in a wood line it's better than leaving it in a ditch and all these little broken sticks just cause such havoc that that catches the leaves so it's tend to what plugs these culverts up. I try to screen a lot of the stuff I bring home, but uh, like I said, there's probably a lot of good material in some of this, but there's also so many organics in this, it wouldn't make, it's not good enough for loom, it's not good enough to like use the base gravel either to me. It's basically just junk fill. I know my daughter, my daughter uh, does the editing on my video. She gets mad that I talk so much and explain stuff, but uh, I know when I watch YouTube videos, I like when a guy explains what he's about and what he does. So, pretty nasty digging. This, this, this development has uh, quite a bit of uh, ledge in it too that you really can't deal with. They had a guy come in I'm going to guess probably 12, 13 years ago with a big excavator and tried to get some of the stuff that's been getting bridged around in the road out. He did get a lot out, but there was a lot of money we paid him. I don't, I don't think it was worth it. But some of the ones that were really aggravating over the years, he found out was the top of a piece of ledge. So you basically end up just bridging the road like we always did. So I think it was... 7500 back then it really wasn't spent very well this is a uh, development a lot of camps in here I think there's only like 12 of us that live here year round of that I think a lot of these people don't even realize the damage that was done up here this year a lot of them go uh, south for the winter. I may come back and pick some of this up later, but I got some of it. I got so much tree work I got to do, I'm not going to grab every little piece everywhere. I'm hoping that they might be able to get some people to volunteer to pick some of this stuff up. I'm going to say I doubt it, but once you start a road committee, most people's attitude is like, no, we got money, but there's only so much money. It's a funny thing, too. You work in the development that you live in, and uh, there's always going to be someone that, uh, they can, you know, a lot of people, once in a while, they'll want to put this stuff out to bid, and I'm fine with that, but... I said pretty much if it goes out to bid, I'm probably done doing it because uh, I don't want to play that game. I, mean, you know, to that, I don't really want to play the game. Most of the people I work for now, I've been working for for 20. Next year, uh, next year uh, that'll be my 25th year in business. Um, most people just call me and tell me they want something done. They know me. Uh, anybody that's lived in here, the problem the last couple of years. Is, uh, the whole bottom part of this development is waterfront. So much of it sold to new, new people. They don't really know me. They don't know how long I've lived out here. Uh, 
they don't know how much free work I did over the years. My attitude is I, I, I treat accounts that are local to me, I'll treat a little bit better because I'd like to stay close to home. So normally I can outbid a guy. Oh, what a mess. These roads were all put in back, I, I want to say, 1953, 1955, I believe, is when this was all thrown together. And when I say they were bulldozed in, they were bulldozed in. But, uh, some of them are not even close to where they're supposed to be. That doesn't look like much of a rock, probably on camera, but you hit that with your plow in the winter, you know it. <laughs> That's another thing in here. I don't mind cleaning up a little extra because I also plow this development. Clean this up and then uh, revisit it maybe. But right now I think I can go up the rest of that area with the greater blade and clean it out. You'll see uh, ended up with you know, basically three one-ton dump truck loads of crap real quick. This morning, I'm going to show you what I use. Um, I just bought this one new because I, I only get about two years out of something you put calcium through. I bought big dollar ones. I bought cheap ones. Uh, <laughs> these ground works from Tractor Supply seem to... I'll get a couple seasons out of this. Maybe three. I think the last one I only got two out of. And the calcium just gets in places and... Uh, it's unbelievable how quick I overrot these tubes out on uh, the cheaper version. I think I've had better luck with this and a couple other ones uh, that I've had. But pretty much what we'll do today is uh, throw some calcium on the roads because we're going to get rain this afternoon. I'm going to do a final grade on the main road, or I should say half of it. But I want to get some calcium in it, let it get rained on, and I'll final uh, grade it. York rake it a little bit then I'll go over it with another coat of calcium and then it's normally good for the season as far as dust control and uh, keeps the road together um, what I'll do is throw fill that bucket with bags and I'll just keep a knife with me put two bags in that hopper and like I said I'll open it up take off until it's out stop but I found uh, to me it's the best way to do it that that spreads one side of the road pretty good as far as the distance it throws it uh, and like I'll fill this probably that bucket three times to get the roads one coat and we'll go from there but I just figured I'd show you know what I use and everybody's like oh they have the hoppers for the back of your tractor but like again calcium just takes whatever you put calcium on it takes it out <laughs> it's like I had one of these that I paid big money for that I used for putting fertilizer out years ago on jobs I had. And um, I don't feel that lasted any better than these cheaper ones. So I'm going to just keep buying the cheaper ones and replacing them every two or three years. But, all right, we'll get loaded up. Start ditching this, cleaning the ditches out. I kind of cut the edge with the grater blade, push it in, then I'll grab all those leaves and everything else that's in it. This is the side that we had a pretty good wash up here, so we're going to be cleaning these ditches real good. This stuff is uh, pretty good to run through my screener, so some of the stuff I'm hauling out of here I'm going to screen and we're going to bring back the straight stone. They don't have a lot of money in the budget this year, but we got to figure something out because uh, once during the winter we had a weird, we, it snowed for a couple days and then we had downpours and this hillside here is like a 14 acre lot and it's all downhill too here. So what was coming out of the wood line was just incredible and it actually took this road out pretty far out and uh, I'd already fixed that early this spring just to get it passable. But we got to try to figure out a way of ma maintaining this corner with the rush of water that comes down through here. But there's a bunch of little cuts like this 
that come down out of that wood line all the way. Like I said, this is, uh, I don't know, it's probably a half a mile of this road is this, this hillside. So all the way down through, we'll be cleaning these ditch lines out, um, running it through the screen or bringing back some of the cleaner stone. It doesn't have to be real clean for what it's doing. And we're just going to try to do a little bit better catch basin. Uh, I'd like to haul off a lot of this, like knock this hillside back to where it's not just keep it. You got a bad rainstorm and it just kind of falls into itself. I dig this thing out about every two years. I've never seen it wash out like it did this year. We just had weird weather. But now it's happened. We're trying to figure out. I'm actually going to add a COVID, I think. Normally in the fall, we pick a couple more projects to do if the money's there. And I think we're going to end up putting a COVID at the bottom of this hill so that it has another area to cross this road because it took the road out at the bottom too. You'll see. That's what I'm going to be working on for a few days. So, um, this corner has been hard to maintain anyway. That's why uh, from where that Explorer is all the way down through is our reground hut top all right we're gonna clean up some of the ditches and uh start on this section of the road the problem with this material is it's just so much sand you get a heavy run of water and it just takes right off uh, so I gotta throw some stone over it so the water can't get right down to it. Like right now the water is just gonna if it, if we get a downpour before I get this done, that's just gonna be a big hole again. But uh this with the last washout we had, we had uh one night where we had two and a half inches of rain. Uh this area right here, I'm gonna guess two triaxle loads of material took right off, but it was unbelievable. Uh, one of the road committee guys lives out here, year round, which is nice. That, that never was true. All the road committee guys would take off for the winter, but early this spring, uh, this was taken off, and I said, hey, you might want to come out. <laughs> one of the other guys that lives at the bottom of this hill does construction, big construction. He called me up, he goes, hey, you might want to go look at the corner, it's taken off. I'm like, yeah, I'm like you, you think, yeah, okay, and then you get here, it's like, holy crap. I actually drove my loader into it and it was all the road was so soft I didn't it took me like a half hour to get out of the ditch. This uh I had an MX fifty eight hundred I think. Yeah, MX fifty eight open cab quite a few years back and uh, I ended up buying this uh, MX6000 because it's the cab version. I think it's pretty much the same thing I had other than it's got a cab and they up the horsepower for the admissions. But th this right here is like the perfect tractor to do road work with because it's big enough. Uh, it's got enough weight to itself so you can drive down it. Just a big enough tractor, like you can scoop a pretty good sized thing of dirt. Uh, weight wise, anything that fits in that bucket, it will lift. I don't know. I don't know what the lifting capacity is offhand, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this tractor. So. And what another thing that's nice about doing the road work is. Uh, a lot of times I'm out here doing this when it's dusty and I, for years I worked with open cab tractors because that's all I could afford and people come down these class 6 camp roads at 50 miles an hour and they blast you right out dust wise they don't give a crap but this just makes us doing jobs like this is a lot nicer with a tractor like this. And I'm not saying, like I said, nothing against people, but it, it, took me, it took me 20 years before I could buy a cab tractor. And uh, 
And even when I bought my excavator, I thought about getting it open station just because it's like it's like $6,800 more to get a cab. So. This stuff's like quicksand. So as soon as you spin a tire, you're just sinking in. So. Uh, 
right here isn't bad, but most of the, re the rest of this development's got a lot of trees hanging in the road. And uh, I gave him a price for doing the tree work. Well, I gave him two prices, one for getting real fancy with it, one for getting the roads open. They, like a lot of people, they, they didn't have a lot of money this year, so they chose the cheaper way out, but I'll just try to give them the most bang for the buck I can. I just want to show people when you're ditching roads how much crap you come up with out of these ditch lines and it's got leaves and sticks and small trees in it um, it's hard to explain to a customer you know a, a lot of their bill on this is me hauling this stuff off and you know a lot of guys are like oh you get free fill this ain't good fill it's got so much it's organic too much organic material in it you can't sell it as like structural fill or um, it's really, uh, I bring this home and I let it dry out a little bit and I'll screen it. Um, some of it, I know when I take it out, it's kind of loomy. I try to separate it uh, when I screen it. Like this, this is probably going to be three or four loads of, uh, that can go into the manure pile once I screen it. So, um, but you got to separate the crap out of it. There's a lot of trash in this. Like it, it you'll find beer bottles and every other thing. So. But I just wanted to just take a minute and show you this. It's uh, something you never see anybody talk about on YouTube videos. But it, when you're ditching these camp roads, any road, the amount, everything that comes off that road, all the fines, garbage that people throw out of their vehicles. We got these ditches pretty much where they're going to be. I cleaned out all I can clean out for the money. Um, you could haul this crap off for the next week if you really wanted to get aggressive with these. But... These are cut out now, so if we get a downpour, they'll uh, work. Like I said, it's a mixture of crap that's coming out of them. This hillside, this is probably one of the worst spots in the development right now. And like I said, we got a cut to where water's gonna find the ditches. Um, I got two of the main culverts. Uh, I wanna say the three footers cleaned out. Uh, that's what this one here runs out and like I said this piece the, the problem we're having ain't really the rain that comes off the edge of the road it's it's the rain that comes off the land that comes down towards the road if you don't manage it uh, it takes the roads out this one here is definitely higher than the road but that goes up and flattens out this was an actual uh, gravel pit probably 25 years ago so this, when you walk into it, there's probably a 25, 30 foot bank of dirt still in there, but it's it's somewhat uphill from there, but that comes down, wants to go in this road and go down. Uh, this section here is 14 acres that it's really uphill. So on a downpour, some, even, even if we get like an inch of rain, you get a pretty good run of water coming out of the wood line here. So this had just been plugged up. So two times in the last six months, we've had a pretty good road wash out because of it. So I think I got that. So that's going to be under control. So now we're just going to throw some calcium on this to get the dust and stuff kept care of. This first section of road, it rained last night. I calciumed it yesterday and I, that worked in. Then it rained real heavy last night. So this is a good morning. I'm going to do a final grade on this, calcium it again, and this should be good for the season. Right here, where this goes from hot top to dirt, people come in here throttling down, pulling a trailer or a camper in here. This will get a little rippled up probably around August, and I'll have to come out and like clean it up a little bit. But other than that, the rest of this road stays pretty good for the whole season. It, the calcium really does make a difference. It, it packs it in, the moisture stays in the road so you don't get to dust it. It's, just, it's unbelievable. Matter of fact, it for a couple months, it's almost like concrete. It's actually difficult to smooth out if it does start uh, rippling. But most of the ripples that come in here after I'm done, it's because people are uh, going too fast. They, uh, the hill, they're just pulling the hills way too fast, pulling a load normally, and they start spinning. We have way more traffic on this road uh, in general anyways because so many people have moved out here full time. But in the summertime, it's unbelievable the, the extra traffic that's on this main road. So, But I just figured we'd uh, get going on this.